Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today I'm going to show you about the 283 that I bought yesterday at an estate sale. And we're going to see if we can get it running. So we picked up this 283 at an estate sale yesterday. Uh, next town over, guy was going to put in a 38 Chevy pickup, decided to go in a different direction. The guy who was building it for him talked him into a 383 or 400 or 350, something like that. But that same rod builder sold him this 283, and I guess it came out of another street rod that somebody updated something. I was under the impression that it was a new engine just because it's so well detailed, but it appears that it has ran before and the rod builder did confirm that it was a good running engine so it's a 283 tell by that casting number 3756519 it was cast on January 14th of 1960 and it decodes as a 60 283 170 horse two barrel car you can also tell that it's got 60 heads on it because it doesn't have the staggered valve covers which the heads could have been switched at one time it's got the short water pump it's got the newer fuel pump on it bent up a nice little custom fuel line there for the two barrel it's got the breather on it does it have a road draft tube oh there is the road draft tube we did get the flex plate and the starter it doesn't have the right starter bolts in it this guy made this neat little cart it's got a 40 ford axle on it you can tell that because it's got hydraulic brakes small five lug pattern and then it's got the round back 37 to 41 spindles. They did weld it on there so it doesn't turn, but that'll clean up. So there's some good parts there. Spindles, brakes, wheels. Even the tires are all right. Pretty good rollers. We pulled it home about eight miles behind the old D100. Made a nice little adjustable stand. You can slide those forward, you can slide this in and out. So with some different attachments where you unbolt here, we could probably put a LS in it or a flathead. Points ignition. They did convert it from the old canister style oil filter to a spin-on filter. I think the plugs were just kind of threaded in there. Delco plugs. Oh, brand new. How nifty is that? Everything's all taped up. We did get the generator with it as well. And a chrome dipstick tube. Pretty excited about that. Not. A couple of the bolts were missing out of the intake. I don't know if that was for some type of bracketry or what they had going on there. Chrome breather cap. It's got the straight thermostat housing. Put the pulleys on it. Untape everything. Check it for spark. Maybe take the valve covers off just to see that we got everything looking good in there. It did say that it needs the valves adjusted on a note that was on the engine when I bought it at the estate sale. What kind of a... Oh, look at that. He's got a neat little rubber cap that goes over his chrome oil pan plug. Nifty! Ooh, he's even got petcocks on the side of the block instead of your standard pipe plugs. Pretty fancy. Yeah, it's got a new cap and wires. Obviously not a new older, but we might have something around there. I think we're gonna have to set the timing on it as well because the distributor is just kind of sitting in loose. It's got the old bent wire style distributor hold down clamp. Looks like they got all the vacuum parts blocked off. Let's we'll hook up our vacuum advance. Fuel line's not hooked up, so I think the first thing we'll do is open up the valve covers, see what we got going on there, get our timing set. Find the right starter bolts, put the flex plate on, hook a battery up, get her turning over, and see if we got spark. Go from there. I did not get manifolds, but I probably got some laying around that'll work. He did have a few, but I didn't want to dig through his stuff all day because it was sweltering 92 degrees yesterday and humid let's find some radiator hoses if we get that wild but it did come with a little bracket that goes on the back of the engine so you can put your gauges in there for your water temp and oil pressure should be fun the valve cover gaskets weren't in there so we got valve cover gaskets in it so since we had the valve covers off and it's been sitting a while, I figured I'd prime the oil pump. The way the oil pump is driven is from the bottom of the distributor. You got a gear coming off the camshaft that's driven by the crank. That gear at the back of the camshaft drives the gear on the distributor, which drives the shaft on the distributor. And at the bottom of the shaft, there's a little keyway, kind of like a screwdriver. And that slot is what spins your oil pumps, creates pressure. So you can take a distributor, uh, cut the gear off, and then just use the shaft, and then put a 
electric drill on the top, prime your pump. It's a good thing to do for an engine that's been sitting for a while, or especially if you've got a new engine to go ahead and get oil to the top end. And then you can also check for leaks and make sure you got oil pressure. So we got our gauge hooked up here that came with the stand. What I've got here is this cute little tool. You can get them on Amazon, eBay, your local parts store. But basically it's a distributor shaft and then it's got kind of like pieces of the distributor housing, which is these two aluminum pieces that basically hold it in place so it's not wobbling around when you're drilling on it. And you slide that slot up with the oil pump runner for a while. So we got oil pressure, got everything up top lubricated with that oil that we were running with that shaft. And then, well, you got it apart, I took and set top head center, turned the engine over by hand, lined up our timing marks. Odds are it's probably 180 degrees off because 50-50-90 rule, 50-50 odds, you're wrong 90% of the time. So you turn that slotted keyway on the oil pump, drop your distributor in. And I usually like to put number one right here at the left front of the distributor cap, or here, whichever one that is. Looks like this one right here. So I usually try to have the rotor pointing at the number one cylinder. This one's pointed a little bit to the right of it. You can put it wherever you want. The firing order is at the front of the engine, 1843-6572. Most small block Chevy guys or GM guys or car guys got that memorized. Turns clockwise on a GM. So I aim that pointer on the rotor towards the number one cylinder, drop my cap on, got all my wires lined up. Like I said, both of the starter round found the right starter bolts. This is a smaller 154 tooth, I think. It's got the long bolt and the short bolt. Had to get one of those, the right one, because I didn't have the right ones, and you can't use regular 3 8 bolts. I talk about that in another starter video that I got on the 53 Ford that we were having some issues with the small block Chevy starter. But anyway, got everything hooked up. Got our starter button hooked up. Let's see if she turns over. Sounds good. So we got two posts on our coil. You got the negative side, which goes to the distributor to run your points. Positive side, we're gonna hook up to our ignition. So instead of a switch, we just got a jumper wire here. Cause we're fancy like that at Mortskis. Go ahead and hook that up to my battery. Hook that up to the coil. There should be a ballast resistor in line, but for as long as we're gonna run this, we don't need that. So then what we're gonna do here is we'll pull the coil wire off. Aim it at something non-flammable and hopefully grounded to the engine. Hopefully you guys can see here. Well, we don't have fuel in the carburetor, so let's see what happens if we got spark. This is a good way to test for spark. Well, we don't have spark. I don't know if you guys can see that, but maybe not grounded on the carburetor. There you go. We got a good spark there. So that means our points are opening and closing. Let's hook that back up. What do you think, Duff? You suppose we got that distributor dropped in or it's 180 off? And if you do have it 180 off, you just pull the distributor out, spin the rotor 180 degrees, and then drop it to where it needs to be. Or if you need to line it up to a different spot on the distributor, you pull it out, stick a long screwdriver down there or that priming tool like I've got, turn the oil pump so you can drop it in. You can move the wires around, but I don't like to do that because I like to keep them so my number one's always at this left front here, just for reference. So if I ever got to diagnose it on the side of the road, I know where I'm at. Small block Chevy, cylinders are odd on the driver's side. So one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight on this side. Fords like to do silly things, maybe Mopars, I don't know. Let's get our Sriracha sauce out. Give her a shot. Notice we don't have manifolds on it. We don't need those. Ooh. Well, our timing is close. Let's turn that distributor back here. Seems like it likes it. I think we're really close here. We don't have a fuel source hooked up yet. I wanted to make sure this was all working first. Oh yeah, she likes it. Well, let's unhook our coil wire. You don't want to leave that hooked up. Those coils, they get hot without that resistor in there or with the key on and it'll burn the points out or sometimes they even go boom and they make a lot of noise. Ask me how I know. Here's what I like to use for a fuel tank. It's just a 
I don't know, about a three gallon boat tank. I like plastic boat tanks, not because they start on fire and they burn up, but because they don't get all rusty inside when they're sitting over the winter or you leave them in a car for an extended period of time or lose them. And they're pretty cheap, reasonable, easy to carry around. They got a gauge on it, but those usually never work. Here's the rest of my will it run fuel system. Just a chunk of 3 a rubber hose, cheapy electric fuel pump. That way we can boost it up to the mechanical pump. Hopefully it'll run off the mechanical pump, but if not, we can hook this electric pump up to our battery here. Light her off. Keep it running for a little bit longer than what I can drizzle that gas in there. We're now the accelerator pump, so we got fuel to the pump. Hopefully our mechanical pump will pick up fuel from that tank that we got there now. Make sure we don't have our fuel line running the exhaust. We don't have a fan belt for that to chew it up. Got our coil wire. Think of that. Are your ears ringing? Mine too. So Duff and I dug around in the parts bin. Found ourselves a nice little two bolt coil mount here. Just like the factory had. Even found the right factory manifolds. It's got the generator mount on there. Go ahead and buff them up quick. Throw them on there. We don't need no gaskets. In fact, we only got two bolts on each side. So, think it'll be any quieter. See what happens. Slingshot engaged. Got the old two jet on there. That's right, half of a quadra jet. stops right there so according to the old man that means she's a good engine there you have it appreciate it thanks for watching click like share subscribe tell your friends and remember doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you're having fun thanks everybody